So that <clears> it, <throat> it isn't a story that holds back in its misogyny and its bigotry. Um, did either of you have any kind of reservations about jumping on board? I know, Philip, you helped develop the script with Laura, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, no. I mean, that was, you know, part of the heart of this story was was spelling out a story that hasn't changed over 500 years and unfortunately needs to have changed over 500 years. Um, you know, I, I was brought up by a single mother who, you know, who had challenges as a single mother and... I certainly, I was drawn to this film because I certainly feel that there are conversations that aren't taking place at the moment that should be taking place more prevalently. Things that, you know, conversations are happening, definitely, but I think that pieces of work that uh, that maybe look at um, certain social experiences through a different lens, um, certainly historical films as well, can often put a sharper focus on things that are taking place in our modern world and that was one of the things that really drew me to this story was the idea that actually was saying something that needs to be said in a way that perhaps would bring a different audience to that that conversation exactly what he said <laughs> except my except the mother part yeah that's a beautiful answer that's a beautiful answer, Phil. Thanks, mate. Um, <clears throat> I was just, I mean, I wish I could say, I was just attracted to the script. I was attracted uh, maybe on a, maybe on a subconscious level, certainly. And then on hindsight, when I, when I look back on it and then exactly what you've just said there in your question and what Phil has said in his answer makes absolute complete sense. Um, uh, what drew me to their project uh, is that the, was that the question? I think was that was more that the or less, question? Yeah, was, basically. More or less. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But what drew me to the project was quite simply, um, oh God, um, I was available and they asked, uh, and timing, <laughs> really. Um, you know what I mean? I, I was. I just. I. I remember. Um, I. Re and it's very rare that I remember many things, as uh, Phil will attest. Um, but I do remember uh, doing, I was doing two projects at the same time, one for ITV and, and one for Netflix. And there was, weirdly, there was this like window of about maybe five or six days. And this script landed in my inbox and my agent asked me to have a little look at it and said, uh, we may be able to fit this in uh, within that within that gap, bless her. Uh, and um, I just remember watching Phil's short film, The Knock, and being blown away by his ability to tell a story uh, so beautifully. And then as a result of watching The Knock, I read the script, this incredibly visceral, harrowing, bleak script that, um, uh, you know, that kind of like, kind of shook me to my core really. And I thought Lord did an incredible job to, um, to narrate uh, uh, this uh, story, this period piece. And I just wanted the chance and the opportunity, I think, to certainly on hindsight, when I look back on it, I wanted the chance and the opportunity to work with Phil and to say Laura's words, really. And I thought the chance of uh, the, those two working together was uh, uh, a situation that I didn't want to pass up, pass up on. Uh, so um, they're the reasons why I did it, and on the, uh, I, I guess the echo of I wish I could say it was for uh, other reasons, uh, much more intelligent re uh, reasons uh, that you guys are alluding to. But it was, and then, but the echo for, of that um, uh, um, has uh, since stayed with me, and I and I see the relevance of it, and. Um, <sighs> Yeah, it just, for whatever reason, it spoke to me. And and I can absolutely see what you're talking about, the misogyny. Uh, I think one of those things, that one of the things that you, me and Emmett discussed quite a lot on set was the fact that, you know, villains, people who we describe as villains, who we view as being, you know, the bad guy, very rarely see themselves as that thing. In fact, if they ever see themselves yeah, that's as that, yeah, yeah. you know, people, people are human and they go through human experiences. And part of what was very important to me and Laura was that the character of David wasn't one that was just a pantomime villain. 
it was one that was doing things for for self-motivated reasons that he believed were the right reasons, mainly only for him, but certainly the right reasons. Um, and also a character that hopefully in certain cases of the film, certain parts of the film, you actually maybe even feel empathetic to, to a degree because mm -hmm. you try, you know, I've tried to, certainly in the portrayal of David from the directorial perspective, I wanted to show him as being human and making those decisions outside of just being a cardboard caricature. And then what Emmett brings to that is so many more levels. And you know, the, the, the intensity of his performance, it, it creates a dimension to that, the role of the abuser, the role of the, you know, the, the horrific character that he is and makes you evaluate the decisions that he makes and the actions that he goes through and the impact that a person like that can have humanizes him in to a certain degree and it's that humanization of a person who you know isn't a nice character that um i think was one of the things that makes his performance so powerful yeah and yeah circling back to your character Emmett, as well i mean you play david who's the, the, the tyrannical brother-in-law um Let's just say you're known for playing less than likable characters, shall we say. Um, why are these kind of characters so appealing to you, especially this one? Well, like I said, this one was appealing to me because I thought the script was was incredible and I really wanted the opportunity to work with Phil. And then and regardless of uh, we, what we lacked there and when we were doing a, a script like that was we lacked time and we lacked money to be able to tell this story. And as a result of that, the, the intensity uh, on set, this cauldron of, of chaos that we were all endeavoring to go on uh, brought us really close together as a family. And those experiences like that uh, are few and far between. And if I see a chance or sniff it out, I'll, I'll jump at it uh, with both hands and both claws. And um, so that that was that was the reason. I mean, it, it was it was chaos when I it was controlled chaos when I was down there. We were fighting elements. Well, we were fighting budget. We were fighting time. We were fighting, uh, and 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 each other. We 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 were fighting. You know, <laughs> we were probably a little bit too too wild to even go there, weren't we? Um, but um, as a result of, of, of that intensity, we've become really, really, really close friends. Um, uh, I think we've all, we've all become close friends. I can't wait yeah. to go down on Sunday for the premiere just to hang out with these guys for, for no other reason. It's been too long. The pandemic, the world is shut down and, it, and it's kept me uh, uh, really far from these beautiful people whom I, whom I fell in love with a, a few years ago. So that's the reasons, uh, the reason, like I've already touched upon why I, I do that. And then for other characters, I mean, it's, <clears throat> yeah, you, you try, I mean, when, when I first, when I, I mean, one of the first ever characters that I was given, the first leading role that I was ever given was a character called Charlie Casanova, a sociopath that bases his decisions on the draw of a card, eight to 10, yes, five to 10, no, and he asks you questions that takes you outside of your comfort zone. Uh, and uh, anywhere from ordering you a coffee to cutting your throat, he completely abdicates responsibility. So when I that that job fell fell to me, and I went around the streets and I with a deck of cards and I played that game for a couple of weeks before I even started filming. And I guess that experience appealed to me. That and and also one thing that we didn't have on on Lapwing was time. So it, it was like kind of like. I was cast and then the next day I was going down to Lincolnshire. So I didn't have the time to research, to read or to anything like that. What we did is we got on set. When I talked about the chaos, we got on set and we let the moment use us, not us try and manipulate the moment. So that was a really, that was a really beautiful thing that we got to do. Um, and then from Charlie, I went on to do with the uh, Hollyoaks and that was uh, to do Brendan Brady, who was, um, who, who, who again, like Phil would touched upon, the thing that would, wouldn't really appeal to either of us is these two dimensional cardboard cutout bad guys. So it's very important to find different colors and different layers and different ways of, of connecting with a character, no matter how vile he might, uh, he comes across or through his actions, et cetera, et cetera. And when I, when those type of roles uh, fall to me, I try and find those little things and try and, 
try and relate to those and connect with those like Brendan Brady was a father he's a he's a he's a family man he's he does really bad bad things etc cetera, etc cetera. but I said I guess the answer to your question is because I've got a dickhead face so people like to, like to, <laughs> uh, to uh, cast me cast me <laughs> in those in those kind of bad roles not that I'm I'm not complaining uh, in the slightest I mean and also it's been it's been very eclectic, very, very rangy for me. You know, I have, there's, I've played some, I've played some good guys, believe it or not. You really have to search for it, but they are out there. They it's a, it's there. ironic because it's so far away from him as a person. Like, you know, I can, I can, <laughs> say, you know, as Emmett said a little while ago, through this film, you know, we've created a very strong friendship and, you know, I, I class him as one of my closest friends now. And you couldn't meet a more opposite human being from the parts that he plays. <laughs> he sells donuts, man, you know? I mean, vegan yeah, you know, I mean, oh, yeah, donuts. yeah, vegan donuts. How vegan donuts. threatening can I be? I mean, really? <laughs> We need to see you in a rom-com. Mind you, I always love Brendan Brady for some reason, but that says more about me than anything else. Well, that, you see, that, that, that is the thing, though. You bring comedy into I tried to bring comedy into that, and a lot of people had, had, a, had a soft spot for him because they saw how troubled he was, and they saw how much he wanted to change. And in tiny little snippets, you see how troubled David is, and you see how much he kind of wants to change, but he's constantly, uh, he's constantly arrested by his own, I don't demons. know, his own, yeah, his own demons. And uh, I mean, he, the one thing that I mean, we all have our inner demons. Uh, the trick is to learn to dance with them, and David so cannot dance with his. So it is, it's one of those things. Um, I don't think he'll be liked in the slightest. Uh, re <laughs> reading some Hopefully of those reviews. Not liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he will yeah. not be liked. Hopefully not liked. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, that's it. Okay. Well, we've got um, Hannah Douglas who plays Patience as, and then she's a mute as well. I mean, obviously that's, a, you know, a metaphor for her, a w women not having a voice. Um is it easier for someone who doesn't have dialogue? Is it easier to say direct and you know act opposite these kind of these characters who don't have any dialogue, or is it is it harder? Is no, it I mean for directorially, it's mm. gone. Go, go for it. No, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, mate. You're, you're I was going directorially. It's it, it's more difficult um, because quite often when you're working with an actor, they, you you can find ways of them articulating around. A piece of dialogue you know if something's not working for them or if they're not buying into the delivery or that the meaning you can you know you can say well okay well, what would you say how would you would how would you tackle it yourself and you know sometimes you can get around tricky bits of performance that way or you can get them to access it just by the the intonation of a line so you can find ways of them delivering an emotion a situation a subtext just by the way that they deliver their line. So obviously without any lines, it becomes quite difficult to express that. I mean, we were, we were blessed with Hannah. Um, you know, she's such a powerful performer and she is so beautifully expressive in the smallest nuance. And she can, you know, she can express these very complex and, and meaningful um, emotions and subtext just through her expression. Um, one of the reasons, you know, we cast her, she was, you know, we had her in mind very early on from very early in the process. And one of the reasons was is that we knew that she was capable of holding something, you know, a role that's incredibly tough. To hold a feature film on your shoulders without saying anything is um, is, a, is a big ask. Um, but I think, you know, she owns it and it's a fantastic thing to see. I mean, I about acting opposite her, I'm sure. I mean, it can... Uh, elaborate to that yeah yeah um, um hannah is i mean uh she's so good and she's so open and available and so willing to be vulnerable uh that it's an absolute joy to act opposite her and uh i mean <laughs> And, it, and because and it is an absolute joy to be her friend, you know, um, especially when, like we've talked about, we've touched upon the material. So 
so fucking unforgiving and 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 vicious that it was important in fact it was in, it was vital for our own, probably our own all our mental health that we bonded in between those takes in between those setups on our days off like there was any but um <laughs> <laughs> so it was important that we connected and uh, and we did and she's able to do it all with her face like like phil just uh, touched upon she's able to do it with her with her eyes and her body language very expressive eyes beautiful eyes uh, and it just shows you what a what a talented actress she is to be able to do something like that without saying one single word I'm the one riffing off the monologues that's easy to do I mean she has to she has to hold that sort of stuff and that's that's a really a really difficult task to do and she did it. She did it absolutely beautiful from the clips I, I, I watched as well. She's a, she's a, she's a she's a fine. And hopefully, I'm really hoping that this movie uh, will then lead to her going on to do more stuff, uh, yeah. and deservedly so because we need it. And also for Phil to do more stuff because we need to see him do more stories and her to do more movies. And, I, and from the response from people like yourself and the reviews that have been uh, flooding in, uh, I really I think that's going to be very soon. And that's, that's the biggest plus to come out of this. Thank you, mate. Okay. Uh, the film was um, also shot on, lo uh, on location in the Lincolnshire salt marshes. Why did you mm -hmm. choose that location? Um, just, I mean, just by watching it made me feel a little bit cold and damp and it really, <laughs> for the atmosphere, to be honest. And did, did that kind of environment lead to any problems? Yeah, I mean, it, it, then it's not, it's not a nice place to, I mean, it's a beautiful place to make a film, but it's not a logistically good place to make a film. Um, I, ironically, the, the, the location was part of the inspiration of the script. So I'd, I'd actually shot some nature documentaries um, on that part of the Lincolnshire coast. Um, and, I, and I loved it so much and thought, you know, why isn't this location more utilized? It's, it's kind of like the moon, it's so remote and it's so expensive. And there's these miles of beach for as long as, you know, as far as the eye can see, with these incredible sunrises and, you know, beautiful skies that kind of go on forever. And I thought, no, not enough people. Film people have done like quite a bit of filming further north, and you know, you get quite a lot of the coast of Norfolk that's featured in you know big films. And I thought this is an incredible location. And then whilst I was there, sort of, you know, had scouted it in my head for quite a, quite a long time, um, and thought this is definitely the place that you know we need to film in, um, because there was you know there was it was a difficult place to get permission to film in as well because it's a it's a nature reserve where we filmed and obviously you know we have to be very restricted in our access and the, the kind of way that we use the, the um the environment but yeah from a access perspective it's a nightmare um myself and the dp actually ended up living on a caravan on set because it was yes so much i remember that oh my god we, oh um, my god having, because having to get to and from set every day was such a long-winded process that it actually just made more sense for us to be on the set. So that first thing in the morning, I could come out and talk to the first AD and, and, and our DP, Shirt McGregor, and have a conversation about what, how we were going to shoot the day, what was coming, you know, the weather changes obviously were another thing that was uh, very, uh, very random. I think we had all kinds of weather other than snow um, throughout the entire process. Gale force winds, massive amount of rain, boiling sunshine, one minute and then a storm the next um yeah it was a it was an interesting place and, and also the, you know there's not a lot of facilities there so we had to kind of bring in quite a lot of uh, facilities to the place um and take over a, a very remote village full of people who were going what is what is going on here we don't never had a film shoot here before um, so yeah it did have its challenges yeah but also um, but, on the flip side we'd look at the village and go what is going on here yeah <laughs> um yeah. but you know i'm sure you had whiskey to keep you warm yeah i definitely had a, had a had a dram or two in the caravan and i had you know my cinematographer to keep me warm as well um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a very cozy caravan um yeah. and uh yeah but the you know the proof of it is actually in you know in the film itself the the landscapes are incredible and mm. 
it no matter where you know you point the camera you're going wow this is amazing wow this is amazing and obviously shooting a historical piece you know we still had our issues no matter where you go in the british isles unfortunately making historical films is a tricky thing to get you know to get right when it comes to landscapes and you know there was some there was some removals of uh, of wind turbines out to sea and that sort of thing um but generally it was a place that you could point a camera and you know just have the most incredible vistas that we didn't have to worry about you know seeing other people in because it was so remote um but yeah it also had its problems when it came to uh, actually filming there um, so yeah philip seeing as this is your directorial debut what would you like to tackle next so at the moment we're working on a folk horror um, which is modern set um, so it's a modern day folk horror in the kind of you know in the vein of the wicker man and um you know the class the, the hammer horror films that i loved growing up um and also you know in in the kind of with the popularity of films like midsummer and which you know that have reignited a bit of a passion for folk horror um I wanted to kind of, the, both of those are American films. I wanted to say, hold on, folk horrors come from, hey, they come from the UK. Yeah. You know, this is, our, this is our filmmaking heritage. And yeah, so Laura and myself, we're working on a, um, a folk horror film and a couple of other bits and pieces as well, but certainly that's the one that we're gonna, we're gonna be working on at the moment. And um, yeah, I hope we're getting a bit of traction from that. So hopefully that'll be the next thing that you see. Can I, can I have an audition? No, no, unfortunately, okay, um, well, I, well, unfortunately okay, after well, working with you um, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> when I said he was nice because he sold donuts, I lied. He's a prick. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm never working with him again. No, no. No. No, there might, there I, was, might be I, I was no, no, I was joking, man. I don't audition. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, of course. Yeah, there might be a little role for him. You never know. Yeah, Emmett, can we see you in a fluffy rom com soon, please? <laughs> oh, you know what? I de I definitely have the face for comedy. <laughs> but I don't know whether I don't know whether we're gonna get for romance. I mean, look at this. Hey, it's a very good I mean, face. A, oh, yeah. stop! Uh, <laughs> Phil looks like a like a, a younger Leonardo DiCaprio. Does anybody yeah. else see that? Does anybody <laughs> else see that? I see that, and I don't know about like. Uh, uh, like you did, I dude. Love... You, you, you had a part in the film. You didn't need to. Do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I, I would love to do a rom-com. Uh, it's a great, I mean, I love comedy. I, I mean, I did a, I've done a, f and I've done a few as well. Uh, a few comedies, uh, like Sharon Hogan's Women on the Verge, I guess. Um, um, I've just finished one now in Belfast. But that's probably not a rom-com. Um, um, but I'd love to do something like that. I think my favorite of all time is Notting Hill. Mm. That's 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 my all time favorite. That's what that one I can I can watch over and over again, pretty much, uh, as far as rom coms are concerned. But yeah, yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. Do you know anybody who's written one or not at the moment? You, no. Has anybody been asking? No. They're not. I, yeah. It's, for some reason, there just there doesn't seem to be any good quality rom coms out there at the moment. I'm sure it, you could you change want? that. Yeah, did you did you watch that film we made? Um, yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's the next point. Well, thank you so much for your time today, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Oh. Thanks for having us. Cheers, and thank enjoy you. the rest of your day. Thank you. You Huge too. Love Take and care. Respect to you all. All right, thank God you. God bless. Bye bye.